we see early in the book, Biff von Rheingold had seen the Norwegian, because the Norwegian is a fan of Bit's films. And we see Bit at the opening of one of his quote unquote straight films rather than one of his porno films. And he's there with this babelicious Italian actress that he's going out with, this, you know, sort of a Monica Vitti type from an Antonioni film. And uh, I think it's, it's called Monica Maraletti or something like that. Um, and so uh, we see the Norwegian seems to be stalking Bit. And we, we, we think that the Norwegian maybe has something against Bit, perhaps. Um, but Bit recognizes him as someone named Bill, which goes to the fact that, you know, we, we know from earlier in the book and as also also the Vincetti brothers, that the Norwegian has many intermediaries. The Norwegian may be some of his intermediaries, may be him posing as other people. We know from the Cleveland scene between the super spy Elias Walker, who appears in his own book later on, that uh, he's called Thomas there. So we know that 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 Bit has probably met the Norwegian, even though he has no idea that he has. And then we get this great thing where, as as the media follows Bit into his film premiere, uh, the Norwegian, you know, basically goes across the street to a square and sits on a park bench. And so we have we get the sense that the Norwegian is going to be doing something dark, perhaps. Uh, who knows, something something bad is going to happen. And then we hear, stop. And it's Paulie Maravelli. And what we think is the Norwegian uh, being the, the predator pursuing Bit in some way turns out to be just a film of that. And that Paulie had hired some people to follow uh, uh, rest, around the wrestling room because he found out that... that uh, uh, the Norwegian is a big wrestling fan. Early in this book, we have you know he, he him boffing some real life lady wrestlers from the era. Uh, we know there's a scene with uh, Big Frank uh, uh, being, uh, and we know that for example that the Norwegian followed Big Frank to Madison Square Garden, where Big Frank had an explosion when the Harlem Globetrotters do doused him with water, and 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 you know the Norwegian is seeing that. So here we got Paulie though is the only guy who can actually track down the Norwegian. He sends his goons. They pick up the Norwegian. The Norwegian's there. As you said, Big Frank senses an opportunity. Uh, he disposes of them. And he knows. And now, I, I think a smart reader who would know the two characters will know that Big Frank isn't going to kill the Norwegian. I don't think that the, the particulars are going to uh, are telegraphed that much. But even if you do know that, there's no way it could be anything different because... Big Frank knows of the Norwegian's code. He knows how that mind works. He studied it. He, you know, Paulie has probably, in tracking down the Norwegian, gotten dossiers worth of stuff on him. Paulie, earlier in the book, hired the super spy Elias Walker's brother, Virgil Walker, against against the the mule and and the foundation, and it didn't come to anything. And that was a dead end narratively in the book. But we know that Paulie likes to gather information. So it's likely that Big Frank is well up on everything uh, possible uh, to know about the Norwegian. And and so, you know, he, he disposed of them. He, he actually, at one point, you know, I think tosses the Norwegian the gun and, you know, he says, you don't want to take me out? Go ahead. But he knows that the Norwegian can't do that because the Norwegian, unlike Big Frank and unlike Paulie, and as, as as ruthless a murderer as he is, the Norwegian is bound by his own dictates. And he could not do this against a guy who had just saved his life. So he knows now that Big Frank has him by his own philosophical balls, that he owes Big Frank something. And we, you know, Big Frank basically employs him to, to eventually take out Paulie. Uh, and, you know, I, I give the hermit crab monologue about, you know, changing the self and whatnot and uh but that's there just from the the switch of the the norwegian as predator to prey the the switch from reality to a film of reality you get this whole paradigm shift in in in, in the whole norwegian's world the character of the norwegian's world is shifted by just that one little stop that paulie says and it takes the reader by surprise Although this is something that has happened before, I've seen in, in certain films. And this is, again, the whole book is indebted to film, filmic techniques.